Hey, how's it going? It's Jamie, the Crafty DIY Guy. I am back and I have got some DIY dupes for you today. These are projects that were inspired or copied from places like Home Goods and Pottery Barn and Z Gallery. You see a lot of really cool stuff at some of those stores, but sometimes it's a little pricey and you can make it yourself. And that's what I did in these videos. Before I get too far down the wormhole of rambling, I do want to do a shout out to Ethan. He is the son of a subscriber of mine and his mom asked me to do a shout out to him. So hi buddy, how's it going? Uh, hey, if you are one of my long-term subscribers and you want a shout out, send me a message, do a comment below. But also, I um, thank you so much for being here. Truly, I appreciate you and everything that we have gone through the last year and a half. If you're brand new to the channel, hopefully you will become a subscriber. If you watch the channel on a regular basis and you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And then also, of course, if YouTube recommended the video to you, thank you, YouTube. And, uh, you know, let's just get into the video because I'm rambling. <laughs> And for my first project, we're going to be making one of these high-end rope trays that you've seen at places like Home Goods and Pottery Barn. For this, I'm going to be taking this bundle of rope that I purchased at a local fabric store. This was $3 for this entire bundle, and as you can see, it is very, very thick. You can easily replicate this tray with some Dollar Tree nautical rope. The first thing I'm going to do is take my rope, and I'm going to figure out how much or how big really I want the tray. And I'm also gonna use this piece of cardboard because we're gonna help reinforce the bottom of the tray with this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just start to spin my rope on the cardboard. And this is just so I can get kind of a visual effect of what I want my tray to be or how big I want my tray to be. For this, you're just simply gonna start spinning it around and spinning it around until you get it the size that you want. Then just take a ballpoint pen or a marker or something and just start tracing around your rope. That way you know how big to cut your piece of cardboard that you were going to use to reinforce the bottom of that tray. Now that I've got my cardboard cut out, it's time to start assembling or start gluing our rope together. I'm gonna to be using this Shore Bonder glue mat that I have. What's great about this glue mat is that it literally, nothing will stick to it. And uh, if you don't have this Shore Bonder glue mat, you can definitely get one. I have a link below, but you could also use parchment paper for this. It will work the same way. All you're gonna do is take your glue gun and just start working your way around and down the rope and just coiling it up like you see me doing here. And uh, as this is getting larger and larger, you may want to add a little more glue than you started with. Uh, initially, when you kind of do this in the middle, I do put a generous amount of glue there. And then as I work my way around, I don't usually use quite as much. And then when it starts to get to a um, kind of a, a larger circle, that's when you see me start adding more and more glue. So hopefully that made sense. When I get to the end or to the size that I like, I am going to cut down my rope and I'm gonna cut it at a little bit of an angle here. And you see that uh, I'm doing that now. And what I'm gonna be doing is kind of gluing that flat up against the side of the tray. That way it really makes it look like it's somewhat seamless. Now, not to worry on how that's gonna look because you'll see that we're actually going to be gluing some handles. But first, we need to flip this sucker over and glue our cardboard bottom to our tray. Now, before I glue my cardboard backing on, I am gonna go ahead and create some of my handles. What I did was just take some of the rope that I had left over. I wrapped some of this twine down towards the end there, and then I'm giving this little guy a haircut. And I'm literally going to cut this down as close and as tight to the end of that as I can. I wanted to give this just kind of a little bit of color, a little bit of an extra decorative touch, and I'm gonna do that on both ends of my two handles that I'm creating for my tray. For the actual backing itself, all I'm gonna do is add a generous amount of hot glue onto the back of that rope. As you can see, I'm going nuts with the glue, hot glue palooza here. And uh, of course I had to stop midway and add some more glue, but that was my own fault. And uh, all I'm doing again is just adding lots and lots and lots of hot glue. And then I'm gonna take my cardboard backing and just stick it right down on top and just make sure that that is good and solid and dries really well before flipping it back over to add my handles. 
And for my handles, we're gonna go back to that area where I ended the rope and uh, just glue this straight down, hold that into place until it gets nice and solid. And then we're going to repeat it on the other side as well. So you have two handles on opposite sides of your tray. And this is what it looks like when it's all done. I absolutely love this tray. Depending on how you style it, it could go nautical, it could go very boho, it could be kind of in the middle. I absolutely love this so much. Also, it's important to note that those handles, they're just decorative. This is not meant for a bed and breakfast kind of a tray at all. So just be careful. Give it, give it some love when you're using it. <laughs> And for my next project, this is a clock that I saw on the Pottery Barn website. I absolutely loved this clock, but it was quite expensive. And I thought the more and more I looked at it that I could definitely recreate this with some product that I already had on hand and a few Dollar Tree items as well. So to try and recreate my version of this clock, I'm gonna be using this Dollar Tree love sign. Also, I had a second one of these galvanized metal signs. You may remember this sign from my Cricut video that I did. Also, I had some of these Jenga wood pieces and I do have a clock kit that I ordered from Amazon. The first thing I'm gonna do is paint the center of my love sign. And I'm gonna use some acrylic white paint that I have here from Craftsmart, if it will ever come out of the tube. I am running a little low on my paint, so I need to uh, stock up on this one. For this one, I did three coats. Um, I know I should have probably painted it darker and then worked in reverse, but I didn't. I went with three coats of the white and it was fine. It was very therapeutic. Once that was done, I then taped it off and I used some of my masking tape or my painter's tape, I should say, from Dollar Tree. And uh, I just painted the frame uh, black, just like the one that you saw in the picture. Now my galvanized sign is almost perfect, except for it does have a little bit of a lip here. And I want this to lay as flat as possible on top of my sign. So I'm just gonna take some popsicle sticks and uh, I'm just going to glue them down on either side of the sign itself. And this will enable that sign to lay flat. Those popsicle sticks are about the same thickness as the lip on the sign itself. So once I did that and I let them dry in place, all I did was just flip this over and glue this down right on top of my sign like so. For my clock markers, I'm gonna be using these Jenga wood pieces and I'm actually gonna use an antiquing wax. You may remember in the Pottery Barn version, they are using um, gold numbers. I almost went with the gold, but I love the way that this black and the wood look. It kind of gives it a very cool industrial look and this is something that I have a lot of in my home. So if it's going to be in my home, I'm going to make it work for me. <laughs> And once everything dried, I just started to glue it around on the clock itself or what would be the clock face. All I'm doing is taking each one of those wood blocks and kind of putting them in the place of where your 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock markers would be. And then I added this clock mechanism that I purchased on Amazon for $8. I used some double-sided Velcro tape for this to stick it to the clock face. And... This is what it looks like when it's hanging on the wall. I love this so much. Super modern, very industrial, and definitely my style. And for my last project, this is a set of bookends that I saw at Z Gallery. They were $70, and I thought I could easily recreate them. I bought a bag of these two-inch wooden balls on Amazon, and I just started gluing them together. Literally, I started off working on my uh, catch mat here, and as you can see, I will end up switching over to the Shore Bonder mat. The catch mat is doing exactly what it does. It catches everything. And uh, for this project, I did not need it to catch everything. So I ended up switching over. But um, what I'm doing is is literally gluing these balls together, kind of stacking them almost like you would see uh, cannonballs. That's kind of what this reminded me of. So I started off with three, and then I started off with two, and then one, and then just slowly started kind of building up the tower itself for the balls. Um, once I had the uh, first set done, then I started on the second set. And again, just starting with the three and then gluing two and then gluing another one and then building my stacks up until I had two stacks that were completely done like this. 
I really love the way that these looked in silver, so I grabbed some Rust-Oleum hammered silver spray paint and gave the balls two coatings of silver paint. Um, not sure if you guys have counted how many times I have said balls in this part of the project, but uh, I can't help but giggle just a little bit every time I do it. So once my balls were dry, I added a second coat of spray paint. And when everything was done, I took them inside and this is what they look like. Again, super super happy with these i think that they look incredible on my shelf i love that pop of silver and how it looks good against that dark wood of my bookcase i am so happy with these i love the way they look even the glue globs that are there are perfect because they look like these are cannonballs that have all been welded together i'm super stoked with this one